Hi there, everybody. This is Buff Larkin from the Big Bang Podcast coming along to you to talk about the uh, the books that came out, a little review, comic book reviews that came out for the books last week. Uh, nice and quick and dirty. That's how we like it here. <laughs> Anyways, let's start off with, of course, let's start off with lovely DCs. All the number nines came out. Uh, we have Demon Knights number nine. Excellent issue. And, of course, brings the old past to the present where they have lovely, uh, two lovely lesbian princesses. You can't go wrong with that. That's one way to get out of the chastity belt situation. That's for sure. And leading the telling the demonites, hey, go to Avalon. Let's bring back Merlin. Let's rock and roll. And the, now the journey is set. Hopefully is over in issue 12 because the last time they had a big thing, it lasted pretty much for eight issues. And that's way too long. That's good. But then we have, of course, a great book this week, or at least last week. It was Green Lantern number nine. It was, uh, of course, discovering what the Indigo Tribe was all about. What an excellent, excellent issue. It's been it's been great seeing Sinestro's Green Lantern, but now it's finally getting to the meat and potatoes of what this book should be about. It's been all set up. Now we're starting to get some progression. I like the fact nobody really knew where this Indigo Tribe was heading. And now, bam, there you go. And now we get to see their ramifications. It's an excellent book. Pick it up. If you like Green Lantern, pick it up. Great artwork as always. Batman and Robin. Excellent book. As I see Damien get taking charge. It's always been him. You knew how deadly he could be with his body. But now with his mind, he is a cerebral assassin to steal from the wrestling. He is a man. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a kid who has been raised up to be the ultimate machine of war and now we get to see not only just his body but also of his mind it's an excellent read batman robin has always been one of my favorite surprise books of the the new 52 it's been something that everybody's been talking about uh mr snyder's uh batman excellent book of course this one is one that's been keeping under the radar people should be picking it up it's one of the better bat books out there that's for sure and speaking of surprises when it comes to bat books batgirl number nine of course, it was a fantastic issue for Batgirl. It was, uh, Gail Simone has just nailed the character down. And the best thing about it, we talked about this on the podcast uh, when we talk about Batgirl. Uh, it's not just a mindless assassin for this Night of Owls, at least not in the Nightwing and, and now in Batgirl. There's a story behind him. And the story is almost as, as better than the actual fighting. It, it, the actual like let's just have the mindless assassin there's actually something behind that and this is probably one of the better payoff stories for this whole court of owls night of owls crossover storyline going on so it's a very good read for people who haven't checked out bad girl it's a good book to check out just because you're gonna get more quality than you're seeing in some of these other bad books where it's just mindless owls fighting off against hero of this book boom bang boom so that's good death stroke Yes, I picked up Rob Liefeld's first issue into the foray of... <laughs> I love Hawk and Dove. That's all I'm saying. And now he's gone off and doing Deathstroke, Grifter, and of course Hawkman. Good luck. I like the fact that Rob has brought back the Omega Men to a certain extent, has brought in Zealot, and and just her, her eyes have been are so blank. It's like she's there. It's like she really is an assassin. That's for sure. But they, it was it was it was an okay book. I like the fact he's he's incorporating other things into the new DCU that you weren't expecting. It was a nice surprise. Lobo does not look like the Lobo that I knew back in the late nineties when they jacked him up on steroids. He's back to being the eighties Lobo where he was just a, a, a lean, mean fighting machine. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, this progresses. Am I impressed with Lobo so far? He he shoved a hand through a man's visor. You can't go wrong with that. We'll see what happens in the following issue. Resurrection Man and, and, of course, Suicide Squad, a nice tie over. I liked Suicide Squad, Resurrection Man, meh. It was a sad tie in. It's all. It, you know, I have enjoyed Resurrection Man from, since the very start, but I have absolutely enjoyed Suicide Squad from the very start. It's a book that you got to go and check out. That's for sure. It's, it's one of those, if you like something that's, again, like I talked about with Rob and in Deathstroke, he, they're doing stuff that you're not expecting right now in DCU. They're, they're not playing it safe. That is for sure in Suicide Squad. So if you want something that's a little bit off off the beaten path, this is an absolute great book for you to try out if you like that stuff. And of course, Walking Dead number 97. It's getting set up for an all-out war at 100, and it's making me excited once again. We, we've trudged through, through the storyline to get to here, and, and at least now we're going to see something pay off next issue. So that's great. And with that, that's our 
comic review uh, for this week. Uh, stay tuned next week, and we'll talk some more. Thank you, guys. And check us out on CoolHotBuzz.com for all, if you want to hear us more of our comic podcast. And, of course, check us out on iTunes on the Big Bang Podcast. Until then, keep banging, everybody. <laughs>